Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to our service of worship as we gather here today uh, to receive our four new communicants in a very special day in their lives and in the life of our congregation. I'm going to begin with a few announcements. Uh, do stay behind for some tea, coffee and biscuits and juice after church uh, this morning and it's an opportunity to uh, congratulate our new communicants so do stay behind, don't be in a rush away. Next Sunday is our Palm Sunday uh, praise service. The choir will lead us and in preparation for that the choir will meet as arranged uh, Monday night at 8pm. We have started a collection for the Barnabas Fund. It's a Christian organisation that will be helping uh, refugees and the war situation in Ukraine. And so they're looking for tinned fish or meat, anything that has a tin opener attached to it. So anything uh, like these two here and fish or meat. And they're also looking for uh, copper soups, boxes of copper soup and uh, energy bars. You can bring them to church next Sunday and I will get them to the depot in Belfast the following week and they will make their way to help people uh, that have so little and that have lost so much. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday and after church there is an Easter egg hunt at 11 o'clock at the home of Mrs Deirdre Roundtree. So all our P1s to P4s are invited. Uh, wear your Wellingtons probably and uh, we look forward to that. And if you would like to help, we have lots of eggs, but maybe next week if everyone would just bring in a cream egg or a, uh, a Rolo egg or a caramel egg and that will help and they will be added into to the, the collection for the egg hunt next Sunday at 11. Today I want to announce the election results. Uh, we had our committee election and the session thank everyone for their participation in that. And so in alphabetical order, our new committee members are as follows. Ruth Adams, Robert Canders, Warren Curran, Kenny Gordon, Barbara Hamilton, George Hamilton, Stuart Irwin and Zoe McGee. We pray God's blessing on these uh, new members of our committee and we pray that they will know the Lord's help as they serve our church and our congregation. Uh, today you got the April newsletter with all the details of upcoming events. You also received a flyer for Easter services. Do take that and maybe give it to someone who doesn't come to church. Don't just leave it in the car or stick it to the fridge. Give it to someone and maybe invite them uh, to come to church. As I've, you've heard me say on many occasions, for every person in church today, there's another person who has stayed away. So uh, let's encourage those who don't normally come. And maybe you could be that uh, link in the chain that brings them back to church. So give them uh, one of our Easter flyers. I think these are all our announcements. We call ourselves to worship now with these words from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. <coughs> Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds amongst all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. So let's declare God's glory now as we sing our opening hymn, which you find in your hymn book number 115. 115, the words of the hymn, Light of the Word, You Step Down Into Darkness. Number 115. And we'll just sing verses 1 and the chorus 2 and the chorus. Oh 
Let's unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, you are altogether worthy. There is no God like our God. You are the Creator God, and we thank you for this lovely um, morning when we can gather together to worship you. We thank you for the beauty of creation. We do praise and glorify your good name. We rejoice that you are the living God, that Jesus is here with us now. The King Eternal is here by his Spirit. May we all sense the presence of Jesus in this building and to those listening to this service at home. May we know that God is with us. You are worthy of all our praise and adoration. Father God, you call us to yourself. We thank you that the call of Jesus comes to us today. Come to me, all who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come away and come unto me. Spend time with me. And so we come to follow Jesus, to be in his presence, to learn from him and to become like him. So may we hear his voice today as your word is read. Father, forgive us when we follow the crowd rather than your son. Forgive us when we follow sin rather than your son. Forgive us when we follow selfish ideas rather than following your son. And so help us to turn from sin and turn towards Jesus and there to find a welcome and a love and an embrace. <coughs> Father God, we do turn to you today in worship. Father, we give to you our gifts and offerings this morning. We pray that you would use them for your glory. Help each one of us to serve you in our church and community. May pleasing you be our greatest priority in life. Father, we thank you for this church in this place. We thank you for everyone here today and those listening at home. Draw close to us. Unite us together around Jesus and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Build each one of us up in our faith today. And be especially close to Luke, Jamie, Josh and Connor as they make their vows. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first Bible reading today is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, where Jesus calls his disciples. And so we read from Luke 6, from verse 12. This is God's Word. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray, and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him, and chose twelve of them whom he designated apostles, Simon, whom he could name Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who would become a traitor. He went down with them and stood on a level place, a large crowd of his disciples were there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. We end there at verse 19. And may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Boys and girls, if you want to come up to the front, we have some chairs for you here and we'll take a few moments uh, together. So you come up uh, to the front here. Okay. So girls in the front row and we'll put the boys in the back row, will we? Okay. Okay. Some more seats in at the back. Okay, girls, will you go into the back? Great. 
Now I have a question for you. Who do you follow? Is there anybody you ever follow? Any, that's, maybe that's a little bit tough. Maybe, yes, okay. I'll give you, does anybody here follow a football team? Does anybody here like Liverpool or Manchester United or Arsenal? No. Maybe anybody here like a rugby team? Yes, maybe Ireland rugby or Ulster rugby. Okay, let me see. Who has ever been to a big supermarket with mum or dad? Hands up. Yeah, I think most of you have. Yes. And had you to follow round the aisles? Up one aisle, washing powder and dishwasher tablets. Up the aisle with the biscuits. Up the aisle with the frozen food. Up the aisle with everything. And you just get fed up. Do you ever follow mum or dad around the shop? Yes, you just get fed up, don't you? Yes, so you follow. Who? I saw the stall. Okay. What about if you have sheep or cows in the field and you're trying to get them all gathered up and you might have to follow the sheep around? Who has ever had to do that? Maybe sometimes to run. You follow them and you think you've got them into one corner and then they scatter and you have to go after them again. Maybe you follow a TV programme. What TV programmes do you follow and you watch it every day? What about Horrid Henry? Is that still on the TV? No. Yeah, Peppa Pig? Yes. What about Paw Patrol? Maybe. You follow all the different TV programmes. What about if you watch someone on YouTube? You watch a follow a YouTuber? Do you ever follow anybody on YouTube and you watch all their videos or TikTok? Well, you, you can follow lots of people. Maybe a YouTuber, um, Dan D. Somebody told me last year when we had them up, Dan DDM. Whoever Dan DTM is, but he's a YouTuber, one of the top. Or maybe when you're older, you follow people on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. And maybe you follow your mom and dad, you follow your friends. But we've just been reading the Bible, and Jesus called 12 people. And do you know what he called them to do? To follow him. And these four young men at the front of the church, look at them there. They used to sit up at the front of the church just where you are but they've been following Jesus and we want you to follow Jesus Jesus said to his disciples come and follow me and we follow Jesus when we pray when we uh, read the Bible and when we come to church and we can follow Jesus so will you keep following Jesus Yes, you can follow sheep, you can follow the crowd, you can follow YouTube, you can follow Man United, you can follow Ulster Rugby, but it's better to follow who? Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus called 12. I wonder if we 12 here today. Nearly, we'll take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, Jesus calls young people, older people, all around. I don't know why I looked at the choir when I said <laughs> older people, but... Uh, Jesus calls younger ones. I put myself into your group, okay? <laughs> this side of the church is where all the young ones are. <laughs> and Jesus calls all of us to follow him, to trust him, and to stay close to him. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for Jesus who calls us to follow him. Help us to follow Jesus every day, at home and school, to read your word, to pray to Jesus, and to come to church. And in these ways, we will follow Jesus. Amen. So you can go back and join your families. And now I'm going to ask um, people to come to receive our new communicants in a moment. And can I ask everyone to take the sheet that you got as you come into church? There's a hymn on one side, and there's an affirmation on the other side. And so uh, today we're going to receive our new communicants. And uh, our new communicants have been attending communion class, church membership classes since about September time. 
and uh, today we are glad to receive uh, Josh Hamilton, Connor Wilson, Luke Surplus and Jamie Young and we thank God for them and all good influences upon their life. So can I ask the four of you to please stand. In the first part, do you believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? And secondly, do you trust in Jesus Christ alone as your Saviour from sin and as the Lord of your life? And thirdly, depending on the grace of God, do you promise to live as a follower of Jesus Christ, led and empowered by the Holy Spirit? And now, do you commit as a communicant member of this congregation to worship, to serve, to give, and to participate fully in the life of this congregation. I do. I do. I do. I do. May God grant unto each one of you his blessing as you live and follow Jesus every day. We as a congregation now stand with you, and I invite the congregation to stand. And I will read this affirmation and you will come in where the uh, line is, where the sentence is underlined. <clears throat> As a community ruled by God the Father, redeemed by God the Son, and led by God the Holy Spirit, and in welcoming you as new members to this church, we now make these affirmations. We affirm the Apostles' faith and the covenant calling of our baptism to be people of God. To you we say, Join us as we worship him together. We humbly share our commitment to live together as a community seeking to be obedient to Jesus in everything. There is no part of our life together which we refuse to submit to his lordship. To you we say, join us as we live for him together. We confidently declare our intention to be witnesses to Christ's transforming presence in our community and beyond and commit to supporting this mission by praying, giving and working. To you we say, join us as we serve him together. And we remain standing as we sing our hymn of dedication, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart.
communion tokens uh, to our four new communicants uh, today. You're not allowed to shake your hands, no? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. Father, may your blessing be upon Josh and Jamie and Luke and Connor. We thank you for them and we pray that by your spirit you would enable them to be your followers all the days of their life, to live for Jesus, to serve him all their days. We thank you for their family and friends and Sunday school teachers and Bible class teachers and all good influences upon them. And surround them this day and always with your love and grace. Amen. And our children can now leave for a Sunday school. Another few verses from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, which is all about the, the cost of following Jesus. So, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What will it good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world and yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Amen. Let's unite again in prayer as we pray for others. Our Heavenly Father, we bring the needs of others before you now in prayer. And so help us by your Spirit to pray. Father God, we remember your people in Ukraine today. And today we think in particular of ministers and pastors working under immense pressure. Keep them safe and grant them patience and strength for each new day. Help them as they teach your word. Help them as they deal with people who are encountering horrific traumas. Father God, we pray for the Christian church in Ukraine and Russia. Help your people to be faithful, to show your love in word and deed. Father, we thank you for the churches in Ukraine, that they have become places of refuge, places of safety and places of hope as people hear about Jesus. We thank you for Barnabas Fund and the practical support that they are giving to people. A tin of fish, a cup of soup, an energy bar. We thank you that they're doing it in the name of Jesus. And so today, we remember all who are living with fear in Ukraine, worried about the future, worried about bombs and killings, worried about the basics, food and medical treatment. And so, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would dismantle the powers of darkness and may justice prevail. Father God, we thank you for our own country here in Northern Ireland and we pray for our needs. We pray for the needs in our NHS, long waiting lists, tired staff, underfunding, 
and in so many other areas there are problems. Guide our government and civil servants as they make decisions. And so we remember today all who are ill in hospital or at home or in nursing care. Comfort them with your loving presence. Surround them with your peace. Be to them all that they need in these days. Father, we thank you now for our church. We thank you that we can meet here today in freedom. We can sing your praise. We can read your word. We thank you for your faithfulness to us in recent times. And we thank you for our new committee members willing to serve you. Grant unto each of our new committee members your wisdom and strength. We thank you for our church committee and our elders, those who work in PW and Sunday school and our Bible class, and those who serve tea and look after our property and serve you in so many other ways. We remember Cheryl as she continues to serve us, our ministry support worker. And so, Father, we thank you for all who serve you in this place. Bless them, and may they be a blessing to others. And as we look forward to our Easter services, we pray that many would come to church, but not only to church, but come to know the Saviour. So bless Reverend Woodside as he prepares the various talks and may we as a people know your blessing through our special Easter services. And so Father we bring all these prayers to you through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray saying Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We stand to praise God using our next hymn, You're the Word of God the Father. Number 209 in the church hymn book. Number 209 in the church hymn book. You're the word of God the Father. Oh, yeah. 
to God's work of its barrenness. Father God, now as we come to study your word, we pray that you would remove all distractions and that we would hear Jesus speaking to us today. Behind a human voice, we would hear you speaking to us from your word. Amen. Jesus called those 12 disciples to himself. And the way Luke described it, he used this turn of phrase. Jesus called to him. And that's the first point I want to make today. That Jesus calls people to him. Called to him. And it's a call to come close to Jesus, to know him, to love him, and to be a follower. First and foremost, we are called to come to him. We're not called to come to a church. We're not called to come to a religion. We're not called to anything else. We're called to him. Jesus called to him 12 young men. Those disciples were only teenagers, young men. And we too are invited to come to him, to come to Jesus and learn from him, to spend time with him, to be a follower. There must have been something compelling about Jesus. When Jesus called and the people came, those 12 disciples came. Jesus was the light of the world and people were attracted to him. And so as Jesus begins his ministry, he doesn't do something very spectacular. He simply calls people to himself. And that is still what Jesus does today. Calling people to himself in a personal relationship. We're to come and listen to him. We're to come and spend time with him. We're to come and know him. And even from this pulpit today here in Drumlega, to the people here in the church and those listening at home, Jesus calls people to himself to come and follow him. Jesus calls people to himself. And surely our response must be like those disciples to follow. And in knowing that we are come to him, we will receive a Father's welcome. Come to Jesus. He is the one who would die for us. He is the one who would rise from the dead for us. Jesus called these disciples with these words, Come and see. Come follow me. And that's still the call today. Maybe Jesus is calling you this morning. Sometimes maybe we can turn a deaf ear. I don't have that problem because I'm deaf in one ear anyway. But I wonder spiritually have we all a deaf ear? God calls us to himself. What is our response? Surely our response is to turn and to follow Jesus. Call to him. And then secondly, there is a cost. You may, may have heard the well-known legend about the advertisement that the Irishman Ernest Shackleton ran in the newspaper in 1914 to try and recruit a crew for his endurance expedition to the Antarctica. And this is what Ernest Shackleton published in the newspaper in 1914. Men wanted for a hazardous journey, low wages, bitter cold living, Long hours of complete darkness, safe return doubtful, honour and recognition in event of success. And it is reported that Ernest Shackleton got several thousand applicants to go on that trip to the Antarctica. Shackleton emphasised the cost. And isn't that what Jesus said in our second Bible reading? And listen again to what he said. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. In other words, there is a cost to following Jesus. Yes, salvation is free, but following Jesus will cost you everything. 
Following Jesus means that you will have to change. Jesus loves you so much to allow you just to stay as you are. And so we need to be prepared to follow Jesus in our schools, our offices, our universities, our farms, our homes, our social groups. This may lead to ridicule and rejection. As we spoke to our young communicants during the week, many of them told us that so few of their friends go to church. And these four and all of us who take faith seriously will face ridicule and rejection. But we are called to stand up for Jesus. To win a gold medal at the Olympics, you need to keep the reward at the forefront of your mind. An athlete will be so motivated to win the gold that they'll be prepared to suffer the costs. They'll be prepared to go to the early morning training sessions, turning down junk food, going to bed early, jumping into ice baths and everything else. And why would they do it? Because they want to win the prize at the Olympics. And they will endure the pain. They will endure the cost because they want to win the prize at the end. Think of those 12 disciples. What was involved for them? They had to give up their time. They followed Jesus. Now we're not going to have to give up our time and follow Jesus, leave our jobs and families and follow Jesus like that. But maybe we will have to prioritise time to be at worship. Prioritise time every day to read the Bible. Prioritise time to read God's Word. These disciples also use their gifts and talents. And God has given you gifts and talents. And God wants us to use them. To use your gifts to build up his kingdom. And every day is an opportunity to sing, to sow, to pray, to care, to teach, to plant, to lead, to paint, to love your neighbours, to bake, to mend, to write, to preach, to visit, to fix, to care, to share. I could keep going. Every day. And so we're not to be lazy with our talents. And so I want to commend to you our church committee, our new members of committee, that as they serve uh, our church in this way. So we give our time, our talents and our treasure, our money. We are blessed people in this part of the world. We have so much and surely we can give something to the Lord who has given everything to us. So there's, we're called to Jesus. And then there's a cost involved. And then thirdly, we're to be part of his church. We learn to follow Jesus with others. Jesus didn't go around on his own. He gathered around him a group of 12. They were there to encourage him, to support him. They encouraged each other. They were his family. And church surely exists for that very reason, to encourage one another, to love one another, to support one another, to help one another. Jesus didn't live in isolation. He lived in a community with others. And Jesus established the church here on earth to be that community of his people. Jesus doesn't call a bunch of lone rangers, but he wants people to gather together, to be his followers together. Jesus went out and he called 12 people. And they gathered together. You could say they were his church. And they went with Jesus. And Jesus, did you notice there, stood on a level plane with them. Jesus is here today. Jesus is here when we gather as a church to worship him. Do you sense that he is here? I trust you do. That Jesus is in the midst. And those 12 disciples were united together. They didn't talk the same. They didn't look the same. 
Some of them were carpenters, some of them were fishermen, some of them were taxmen. They probably had different political views. But they were united together around Jesus. We all have different jobs, different backgrounds. We're different. But when we come through the church doors, we should be united together. Jesus in the centre. Jesus is what we have in common. We are all sinners dependent on God's grace. We're not to be people just who simply attend church now and again. We're to be part of the church. We're not to treat church like a golf club, a hockey club, a football club, the WI, a lodge or anything else. Because Jesus is in here in the midst. And so we need to make worshipping with the family of God a priority. And that's what these four new communicants have committed to today. We're not meant to live in isolation. We work together. Jesus walked with people. He ate with his disciples. He talked with them. He served. He washed their feet. He shared. He served with others. Are we prepared to live like that? I want to finish now with this story. In 2001, a man called Carl Power stood on the pitch of Old Trafford, wearing a Manchester United kit and getting his photo taken as part of the team just before a Champions League final or a clash. Might sound, there's nothing unusual about that, except Carl Power had never played a game of professional football in his life. In fact, he didn't even know who the teammates were. They didn't know him. Unbeknown to almost everyone, Carl Power was an imposter who had managed to sneak onto the pitch at Old Trafford and get himself a picture with the team. And no one noticed. He stood alongside the team. It was the ultimate sporting prank and landed him in the front pages of the newspapers the next day. And you know, Carl Pard wasn't happy with that. Over the next few years, he would manage to appear as a tennis player at the centre court of Wimbledon. He even managed to be, to pretend to be an English cricketer and get his picture taken with the England cricket team. And if he wasn't content with that, he even pretended to be a Formula One driver and got to the podium and sprayed a bottle of champagne over others. He was an imposter, a pretender. God does not want pretenders or imposters. God calls people to himself. He wants us to consider the cost of following. And he wants us to be involved in his church. Not just pretending. Because what did Jesus say? There will be a day coming when Jesus will return again in all his glory. And on that day, he will separate the sheep from the goats. He will separate the real people of faith from the imposters. So may each one of us be real. May we be people who are called to Jesus, who know the cost and are prepared for the cost, in our time and our talents and with our treasure. And may we be part of his church, serving, part of the team. Amen. Let's stand to sing our closing hymn, O Church Arise, 131. <coughs> 131, O Church Arise. <laughs>
joined together in the words of the grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Please be seated.